merciful Father, speak unto me as I speak to your people, O God. May your Holy Spirit be our teacher and guider. May you fill us with the Spirit so that, Father, we know and acknowledge you more in our lives and that you continue if our Father, making us strong in you, that always serving you is not in vain through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us be seated, brethren. I take this opportunity to greet all of you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Also, I want to thank uh, Reverend, the vicar of this parish, and the assistants, and everyone uh, among us in this congregation for giving me or allowing me to stand before you to share together the word of God. Receive greetings from my family and uh, my uh, part of the con uh, my congregations at Kisauni Emmanuel where I'm ministering. That just convey their greeting to you. Do you receive them? Thank you. My name is William Katama. I love the Lord. He is my savior, and by the grace of, of the Lord, I'm the Archdeacon of Kisauni Archdeaconary, whereby St. Peter's Church is within the Kisauni Archdeaconry. So today, I'm visiting my fellow congregants as we share together the word of God. Uh, the priest invited me to share, to worship with you this service and also uh, to preside the elections of which by the, our constitutions that it mandates me to come and uh, preside uh, the election. So, after this service, we shall remain together. We do, we do our AGM and the elections so that I can file the returns to the bishops accordingly to our constitution. May God bless us all. This morning, brethren, I want to share with you from the letter of the epistle of Paul to Corinthians chapter 15, from verse 57 to 58. And uh, the theme is that be strong in the Lord. Some are uh, Some uh, Bible says that be steadfast in the Lord, be strong in the Lord, for your work is not in vain. So today I'm speaking particularly on how to be strong or to be steadfast in the Lord. As a Christians, we are called. As believers, we are called to remain steadfast in the Lord or to be strong in the Lord. Why should we be strong in the Lord? As we are living or as we live in this world, there are a lot of trials, there are a lot of temptations, there are a lot of, a lot of situations that can be an obstacle for our being steadfast to the Lord, or being strong to the Lord 
economically, socially, anyhowly, as we live in the Lord. There are some strains that can pull us back eventually being redirected to other things. But when we remain strong or when we remain steadfast, we shall not be swept off from our focus and from our calling. As a Christians, we are to continue to be strong. And once you are strong, your faith nourish. Once you are strong, you will practice what we confess. Once we are strong, the devil, we are going to defeat the devil with all of his tactics that he attacks us. We are to remain strong. When the devil tempts us, or when trials come of us, Christians, we are to remain strong. When sickness befalls us, we are to remain strong. When situations become difficulties in our homes, at our working place, where we conduct businesses, we are to remain strong. Strong in a sense that we are going to testify the victory of the Lord. In verse 57, it reads, But thanks God who gave us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. Always we are called to give thanks to the Lord because he gave us victory over sin and even death through Jesus Christ. So, my dear brothers and sisters, when we remain strong, we shall not be, be shaken by circumstances coming around us. Sometimes back, I was ministering in a parish, and when I was ministering there, when I was posted in that parish, I found the church is in ruins. The old buildings are in ruins. Then I asked our, uh, the church elders, why are we worshiping God in these situations? They told me these buildings are gazetted as monument under the National Museums, so you cannot touch or do anything on these buildings. I asked them, what was the purpose of this building, of this church? It was a sanctuary of worshiping God. Why is it in ruins? It is because it was gazetted as a monument. I could not connect the two, the, the answers. I asked them, do you have any agreement with the National Museums of Kenya? They asked me to go and ask the bishop that question. So I went to the bishop. Is there any agreement, any memorandum of understanding between this church and the National Museums of Kenya? They said me go and ask the National Museums of Kenya. I went to Fort Jesus. I posed the same questions. They told me that that church and all those old buildings there are gazetted as monuments. Is there any memorandum of understanding between you and the church? No, we don't have. How was it gazetted? Oh, because the, the buildings there have come to an end. 
of age and uh, uh, the, the, it was, we found it to be good, that is me gazetted. Okay, second, what is your role as a National, as a National Museum of Kenya? Is to preserve and to maintain. Well, what are you maintaining in that church? They told me that unless we are located some funds through the acts of the parliament, as when we can have money to do the maintenance there. Unless you are located fund, have you requested for the funds for the maintenance of these buildings? They say no, sometimes, you know, uh, when we ask for money, we are told that unless until the money is available for us. But do you know that that church was meant as a sanctuary of worship? Oh, yes, we know that. And why are we worshiping God in the ruins? There's a lot of leakages. You are not comfortable in here. And I told them, yes, you have answered me part of the questions that I needed. That your mandate is to maintain and to preserve goods that you are preserving. This, this building will not, will, not, will not be at a time this uh, building, if we're not careful, then this these buildings will just come down. But because you don't have MOU, Memorandum of Understanding with the church, can you allow me now to use the congregants to, deal, to do the renovations of this church? They said we can allow you, provided that you don't change the structure. I told them, then well and good. That is okay. So they gave me the mandate to do the renovation, but not to change the structure. Then I, I went back to the Christians. I all gave them the answers that I got from the National Museums of Kenya. They said, but we have no money. I said, no, we cannot say that we have no money. The fact that they have allowed us to do the renovations, we cannot say now we have no money. We must seek funds so they can worship our God at a place where it's very pleasant. Then I started, uh, I went on my way seeking the money. I visited the German uh, ambassador because those buildings were built by the German missionaries. I went to visit the ambassador. I discussed with him on those buildings and wherever it was there, and he asked me, now what do you want me to do for you? I told her, she was a lady, just to restore this lost glory of these buildings. I want to, to do renovations of all these old buildings and also worship God at a pleasant building. She told me, yes, we can do it. Just go and form a committee and part of the National Museum members, bring them together, we chat our way forward. I did exactly, I formed my members, I called some few members from the National Museum of Kenya, we sat together, we do a budget, to do the renovations, I went back to the embassy, I told her, this is how to have come out. They said, this is good. Are you sure that when I give you money, they will, you'll work as intended for this purpose? I told her, yes, I'm there to work for the Lord. Praise the Lord. The ambassador first gave me five millions. I did the renovations for the church and some other buildings to its completion, we put a very expensive roof, we replaced it, we did the painting, and we did the windows and everything. And they were saying now, wow, this no building is good. After I've completed the, that first project, I went back to her. I told her, this is what you gave me, this is what I was spent, come now and see for that yourself for the building. She came down and she saw the building. She was so amazed. She said, this is beautiful. Now, what next do you want me to do, Reverend? I told her, there's a lot to, to be done here. 
We start again. We drew another budget. She gave me another five million. I did renovation. I did good work there. And everything now just come. You see, the church now was coming. A place, a real place of worship. And many people were, thanked, were thankful for the work I was doing there. But the devil is a liar. The devil is always a liar. I felt sick after I've done part two. I felt sick. I went to the hospital. I saw a doctor. After doing all examinations, he did not give a true diagnosis of my problem. That led to get a bad treatment. That bad treatment, it collapsed. My foot tenders. I could not stand on my own. Because of that bad treatment. So I became sick. I could not walk. For a period of one year, I was on wheelchair. Then I visited another doctor. He told me that, no, no, Reverend, you are given a bad treatment. And you are lucky that it's only your tendons that they became weak. They were they really collapsed. But, and this is Dr. Bebora, he told me, I'm going, to, I'm going to treat you, I'm going to operate you. I'll restore I'll, all this, the, the, the collapsed part or the weakened part that have collapsed. I'll remove them out. And he, he was speaking as a joke. I'll just remove them, I'll do the repair for you, and you'll be okay. I asked him, Do you repair on my body? What do you mean? He said, Yes. I'm going to do it. Don't worry, Reverend. I said, No, repair. Where do you get to the spare parts of my body? You want to tell me now, from now, now I will be crippled, I will not, will not walk? He told me, no, you will. He took time to convince me. So he booked me at the Pandya Hospital. He did the operations. So I went back to that parish, but I still was on wheelchair. Now two things happened. My Sunday school teachers and children, because I was just in the vicarage, helplessly, and I want to thank the bishop, because one year, I'm not active. I'm on wheelchair. He could have dismissed me we are on a medical ground. But the, the bishop said, no, I know you very well, and the work that you've done for this diocese. If the doctors assured you that you'll be okay, why should I dismiss you? Let us wait for the final results from the doctor. I say thank you, Bishop, because I know constitutionally it's only after six months. You go home, and on medical ground you are retired. But I thank the Bishop. He encouraged me. So came my Sunday school teachers, my Sunday school children. They came to fellowship with me most of the times, having their service with me within my house. They brought me some gifts, and they were always praying for me, our pastor, we pray to our God that is going to heal you. We love you. And one day you will be in the church. They were always encouraging me. And I remember being their prayers that, Lord, heal our pastor. We love him very much. Heal him. Heal him. Then came my two members of the PCC, my strong pillars. They visited me also. And they told me that, Pastor, I've come to, to come to pray with you. I said, yes, let us pray together. Pray for me. But they said, before we pray for you, or before we pray, let, let, listen to us first. Since we are coming in this parish, there have been a lot of priests since the inception of this parish and these buildings. Many priests have come and go. You are only two years 
in this parish. You have done a tremendous development and everyone is happy about it. But I want to assure you, our clergy, not everyone is happy with what you are doing. These are two, uh, two church council members. Don't think that what you are doing, many people are happy about it. Because there's a lot of comparison done outside there. And in many others, my others are happy and others are not happy. Why you doing all this development here? So, our clergy, be very careful. And they use the Swahili word, how a jamaa wa You see? That's what they told me exactly. So, I was somehow disturbed. How a jamaa wa shanianza kivipi? Be very careful. How a wa shakuanza ha? The moment they uttered such a word, I had a conviction within my spirit that no, this is not a right message for you. Don't accept it. The spirit in me, they said me, don't accept this message at all. So I left, they discussed, they discussed, and then I finally said, let us pray. As they were praying, the spirit in me said that, don't accept these prayers. They have just come not to encourage you, but to discourage you and to catch fear in you of what you are doing here. So don't accept even this, their prayers. So they prayed, they prayed. At the end of the prayers, we will say what? Amen. I not say amen. I just remained quiet. I just remained quiet. I was about to ask them this question. Can those people who are answering me not be a one among you? Why do you bring this message to a sick person? So, I compared the prayers of the Sunday school and the advice of the parish council, two council members. I say, wow, are these the people I'm ministering? But God, give me strength. Make me strong. Let me not be weaved out from what I'm doing because I know what I'm doing is not in vain. What I'm doing is for our own glory. So brothers and sisters, be steadfast in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. That sometimes sickness comes as a tempting vessel unto you. Sometimes the devil allows sicknesses. Sometimes situations become so bad, even in our homes. But what I can pray and what I can urge you, be strong in the Lord. Don't be weaved out. Be strong in the Lord. Work for the Lord. Work for the Lord. I always tell my Christians, our worship is complete when only we worship and serve our God. There are some members who just take one option, just worship. worship. They come, we come to a church and we say that because I don't, I don't want to be associated with the main activity on this church, my aim here is just to come and worship God and go back home. I tell you, and I tell you for free, your worship is not complete. Unless you worship and you serve God. You serve God with all resources that has given you. We serve, you serve God with the talent that has bestowed on you. And sometimes I tell Christians, and even I tell you, you Christians in St. Peter's Church, when the church comes up to the programs of development, when the church council or the building committee comes up to the programs, they just give you an opportunity to serve your God. When we say that we want to do this, want to do this, want to expand this church, want to do this, want to do this. They are just giving you an opportunity 
to serve your God with the resources that God has given you. We read from the Bible, Paul was a good missionary. He traveled different countries. He worshipped God. He served God. Everyone in the Bible, all those who call them saints, they worship God and they served God. Abraham worshipped, built and uh, uh, altars. He worshipped God, but he also served God. We are to serve our God. For us to be enlisted for the list of the saints, it's not only worshipping, but it's worshipping and serving God. And doing so must be strong in the Lord. I remember when we were in Sunday school, we were taught this song. Oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, Lord, I want to be among the number. Oh, when the saints go marching in. You want to be among the number? Serve and worship God. Be strong. Only worshiping God alone? No, you will not, you'll not be included in those saints. Second, how do we become strong or be steadfast in the Lord? How? There is a song, there's a hymn, in uh, Nimbo Standard 288, stanza 3. Choir, are you there? 288, stanza 3, Nimbo Standard. Can we read that? Can we sing that quietly? I want to, say, I want to tell you how you can remain strong in the Lord. Yes, then we can sadaka. Can we start together? Just stop there. Just stop there. Damu yake na sadaka, damu ya Yesu Kristo na sadaka yake alijitoa kwa hiyo kwa sadaka na tegemea daima. A key word underlined na tegemea daima. Damu yake na sadaka yake mimi Mkristo I as a Christian to be strong or to be remain steadfast na tegemea daima. That word daima. Daima. Not partially. Segeme damu na sadaka kriso tu kwa wakati umoja. Lakini holy heartedly, whole heartedly, whole of my life, I depend on him. Daima. So for you and for I to remain steadfast, depend on the Lord. Holy heartedly. Daima umtegeme Yesu Kristo. Daima na umtegemea Yesu Kristo. As I do that, then I become strong because I depend all upon on Jesus Christ himself. Come what may come, when God blesses me, even if no God I choose not to bless me in a certain time, but I still depend on him. Kumtegemea buwana daima. You will become strong when you depend on the Lord. You will become strong. Sometimes I find it very queer for a Christian, even if he had a small headache, something very small, he rushes. Sijui hapa kwa 
kahoma kidogo tu unakimbilia kwa waombeaji watafuta where these prayer people where they are and sometimes you end up to the witchcraft just a headache you cannot even pray for yourself <laughs> because you don't depend wholly for the lord you seek all this prayer where people where they are stand firm be strong work for the lord another example i know some of us come from the rural homes in the rural homes this, uh, i like this uh, tomato plant eh? those who come from homes that they know kama ulima lima kidogo you are the kitchen garden pale unapanda tomato pale ndani there's very that plant it has a very good philosophy on how it grows when you remove it from the nursery you transplant it what ex do you do you put a stick there support to support that tree that that plant and as that plant grows up you always keep on tying with that stick to support it as you do the pruning so that can give you good fruits you always tie it with that support so at the end you will see this plant giving you good many tomatoes but the moment you re remove that stick this plant fails collapses fails, fails down hmm? i always i want to tell you christian learn from that tree that plant as you want to become strong depending on jesus tie yourself with jesus tie yourself with the jesus no matter how god prospers you tie yourself with jesus just as that plant it depends on that stick it gives you good fruits good tomatoes but it depends on that stick don't allow yourself to be de de detached from that stick and the stick i'm talking here is jesus christ always tie yourself with jesus when god has given you a good education or is a degree tie that degree with jesus christ when god prospers you tie your prosperity with jesus christ when god anything that he does tie it with jesus christ. so depend on that in jesus has this plant depend on that stick and it gives good fruit this is how you become strong in the lord so when god prosper you you will have nothing to boost because you know that whatever you have you are being tied with this stick and it will support you and that's how jesus want to support you what jesus how jesus want to make you fruitful by depending on him praise the lord by doing so you find yourself that you are, it is easier even if to support for the work of god because you have been tied with jesus himself and will become productive you will become pro you will become useful to the church and outside the church be strong do not weave out from jesus christ be strong and do the work of god and whatever you do for the lord when you're tied with jesus is not in vain in the god the father the son the holy spirit